morning, Dale. It's really good morning to this time. Yeah, Wednesday. I said Wednesday night. I said good morning to you. Somewhere it's morning. Yep. <laughs> Hey, you're welcome. Good morning, y'all. Good, Good to see you all bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, smiling faces. And isn't it nice to have a little bit of little cooler weather? We, we can kind of get out and about a little bit without it being a brain baker out there. But it's wonderful to come together as believers, folks of like minds, here for the common purpose to praise and worship our Heavenly Father. You know, for the believer, peace is not to be found in the ease of life. Real peace is only found in the presence, power, and grace of our Savior, the King, the Lamb, the I Am. God's peace can be yours, even when the storms of life take you beyond your natural ability and wisdom and strength. You can live with hope and courage in the middle of what would have produced discouragement and fear because you know you are never alone. Jesus is with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. This is the day the Lord has made. Amen. All right. We've got a few announcements here. Um, first of all, Pastor Les is not here today. Everything's fine. He's just getting a little R&R. &R. I mean, uh, they're up there visiting Debbie's sister. So uh, pray for him, for him and Debbie to have just some real good relaxing time, be able to exhale a little bit, and, uh, and pray for safe, safe travel for them on the way home. Um, even from a remote lo location, he's doing uh, in the, it, the prayer in the mornings. So if you want to pray with Pastor Les in the mornings on Facebook, he's there. If you're not part of the group, put in a request and we'll get you in. And you can pray with the pastor in the mornings. Um, speaking of prayer, today is National Prayer Day. And so... Um, I don't know if all of you are aware of what's going on in Afghanistan, but uh, um, anyway, I'll just read it. Pray for the people of Afghanistan. Um, join Franklin Graham and his Samaritan's Purse team. Uh, he's calling for a national day of prayer. Thousands of people, including 15,000 Americans, are desperately trying to escape Afghanistan after the country's fall to the Taliban. These Islamic extremists who now have taken Afghanistan by force have a history of brutality, including beheadings and public executions. Time is short and the need is urgent, and that's why he's calling for a, prayer, a National Day of Prayer today. With the Taliban blocking all the access from the airports and all exit routes, this is a life and death situation for Christians and other religious minorities and those that have worked for the American government over the past two decades. There is no hope for these people to get out safely apart from a miracle from the hand of God. And that's what we need to pray for. And we will. Uh, market calendars for the September 12th. We're going to have a chili potluck, and it's going to be a lot of fun and really good. Uh, more information about that coming, uh, but if you just can't wait, there is a few uh, pamphlets there on the back table you can grab. If you have a phone, one of these uh, Big Brother tracking devices, be sure and silence it or you can shut it off. Now's a good time so you don't get the evil eye from everybody. So yesterday, uh, Teresa and I were driving by, and we saw the Reddings out doing the yard work out here in front of the church, which thank you guys for your 
just uh, really it's a ministry that you do here, keeping the grounds looking so nice. And uh, Dave and I were talking, go figure, and um, we were talking about voting for Larry Elder for governor. And so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. Uh, he's against babies being killed. If that nothing else, vote for him for that. If you don't like some of the things he says, he's, he's not for killing babies. That's my opinion. In the word uh, Wednesdays, we, uh, we've got uh, coming up this Wednesday, and um, we're going to have a video next week. It's the history of Calvary Chapel. It's really, it's really well done. I encourage you to come and watch it and um, shows it from the, the hippies on, on up to where we're at today. So uh, I encourage you to come. That's going to be uh, Wednesday at 645 here at the church. Let's see here. Do I got everything? Yep. All right. We have our unison reading. So in your bulletin where it says welcome on the bottom there, unison reading, John 16, verse 33. Let's stand for the reading of the word. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that your spirit comes Come join us. Father, I pray that you will clear our minds of everything that's not of you. Unclog our ears so that we can hear your word. May it penetrate into us and that we be not only hearers, but doers of your word. Father, I pray that you be with our brother Dan as he brings the word today. I pray that his words that he speaks will be your words. And Father, the world is such a mess right now. A lot of us are angry at, at the situation in Afghanistan and how our country has turn our backs on people of our own our own people and lord we're we're crying out to you for a miracle lord i pray that you find some way lord that these people can escape satan pray for the hamiltons lord be with mrs hamilton lord let her feel your presence Heal her, Lord. Be with Pastor and, and Debbie. Pray that they have a relaxing time. It's just some great fellowship with, with folks there. They come back with their batteries charged. Give them safe travels as they come back to us. Lord, we need to encourage our pastor. Pray for him. In son's name we pray. Amen. Good morning.
Good morning, good morning. Yeah, it's a real blessing to be here. Top of the morning to y'all. Let me start off first. Let me give you all a big squishy. Okay, there we go. Yeah. God's so awesome. It was, uh, it was neat. As we went through those songs, I, I was thinking about, about Les. Um, we first got to know each other when um, my wife and I were youth pastors over at the Presbyterian Church. And, and uh, my sister knew Les and Debbie. And uh, so Les came over and helped me with worship with the kids and uh, got to know him. We've been friends ever since. And he's been a really big influence in my life. I remember when um, um, we were, my wife and I were going through a hard time and Les used to stop by and he was just such an encouragement. Um, you know, I can see that, that Jesus shine on his face and he's just, he's just a great brother. He and, he and Debbie are, are wonderful folks, and I just think the world of them. And um, so he's, he's just a good, good bro. So a little bit of echo here, Mikey. Echo. Feedback. Yeah, it's nice to visit with Mike too. So it's great to be here with y'all. Um, we're going to look at a really cool part of scripture today, Psalm 34. So if you want to get your swords out. And uh, we're going to look at the first 10 verses. It's really special to this. Uh, when my, da my son Danny and I uh, really, really hooked up on his senior in high school, he got invited to go to a Billy Graham crusade over in Sacramento. And uh, he went forward. And we, we taught him about the Lord and everything. But he made a really uh, a, a good, solid stand. He's going into his senior in high school. And... Uh, and it, so, so this this uh, first verse here we'll look at it in a second was has always been special for for my son and I, and uh, we'll read over in a minute and, and uh, it's it's really good. He, I was trying to remember with Mike uh, when Dan. How many of you were here when Danny came and shared about where's the joy? Okay, yeah, it's it's really cool. So he's doing great back in. He lives just south of Nashville with his wife Michelle and the three boys, and they're 13, 11, and six now. And uh, wow, yeah, it's amazing. Being a parent's really awesome. Being a grandparent, that's pretty special too. And uh, so that's, really, that's just a little update. My wife's doing great. She's, she, had, she was gonna make it today, but she has to take care of my dad. Um, he, he lives with us and, and uh, um, how many know Norm, my dad? Okay, yeah, quite a few of you. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been um, alive now for 96 years and about seven or eight months. I did some math at his 96th birthday. That's 36,575 days. 
Think about that for a second. That's a lot of get-ups. Plus, I got really thinking deep on this too. Do you realize that every one of those days was filled with moments, right? Just like our lives. Every moment is precious in the sight of the Lord. Everything we do, one moment to the next moment to the next moment. That's how we live our lives in the presence of the Lord, right? And that's where the joy is in his presence too, isn't it? Yeah. So you just think about that. Treasure the moments. How many of you would agree that's a good idea? Yeah. Because if you get all worried about tomorrow and you're fretting about yesterday, you can miss the moments of your life. They're right in front of you where God wants to just help you be aware and, and you can notice little things that are really special. So anyway, that's just a little, little intro. And I, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm just really uh, doing great and just, just glad that God's with us. So uh, let's ask a blessing on this, uh, this uh, reading, reading of his word and just being able to share here today. Uh, Father God, I thank you right now for being with us. I thank you for your tender care and your love for us. Thank you for each and every person who's here today. I ask humbly in your name, Jesus, that you would provide extra strength, extra power of your spirit, working in each person's life and situation to bring them closer to yourself. Bless the, bless the extended families represented here, um, co-workers, people that we're praying for and concerned about. Pray that the power of your spirit will just extend mightily and powerfully that we can head towards a home stretch strong and fulfill everything you want to do in us and through us faithfully to the finish. We thank you today that we could gather around your word. I uh, just pray for a um, clarity for my mind and heart and spirit that I can just not get in your way at all and that you can just teach us uh, and, and open up and illuminate all this word for our hearts and our lives. We give you all the praise and glory today in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. So everybody's at Psalm 34. I've got the uh, New King Jimmy. All right. For translation here. So we'll just jump right in. Okay. I'm gonna, we're going to do over the 10 verses. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There's no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Amen. That's some good stuff. You know, in this first verse here, I will bless the Lord at all times. Um, as, we, as we think about this, that um, all the things that happen, morning, noon, and night, as, as our day unfolds, we're called to bless the Lord. Now, bless, I looked at that, it's a word called barak in the Old Testament, and it means to salute, to thank, to praise, to kneel down. So just think of your, your heart approach. You know, kneel humbly in your heart. You're going to bless God. You want to bless him. You just, all the times, can everything that's going on, well, I'm bless the Lord. yes. Yes, thank you, Papa. Thank you, Jesus. I like to hop in my car and uh, ask, ask Jesus to ride shotgun with me and give him, you know, give him five so he can be with me while I'm in my car even. Okay? I'll bless the Lord at all times. Um, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, and continually means unceasing, always and permanent. Now, if you think back, I know Pastor Les has taught about the tabernacle and the wilderness and the, and the temple that was set up. Those were a shadow of things to come. One of the things that, that, that God instructed was that the oil in the lamps were to never go out. Always the lights burning right there in the temple. And also that the incense representing the prayer of the saints was always to be, to be lit. So you always have the incense 
and the oil and the light burning. That's like for us, continually, always, always, blessing the Lord, all times, continually be in my mouth, that his words can come out, his praises. Um, it's really good. In Ephesians 5.20, it says, we're to give thanks always for all things to God the Father. It's good. There's a little, um, let's look over real quick over to 1 Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> now we know in the, in the Old Covenant, God instructed that the Levites were to be the ones who were the priests. And it was special. They were the only ones who were allowed to go in the temple. They were, only allowed, they were the only ones allowed to go behind in the Holy of Holies at Yom Kippur, make the sacrifice. And, and uh, but look at, look at 1 Peter 2, 9. It's talking about us here. It says, but you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Isn't that awesome? Think about that for a second. Look what God's done. Instead of just having the Levites set aside, he's called all of us to, to be part of the, the priesthood, people that could bring him praises. No more veil, right? Open right to the Holy of Holies. His presence. And that's what he's calling us to. Pretty good stuff. Okay, for, for us. How many of you are thankful that he's called you out of darkness into his awesome light? You think I think about that sometimes, just how how God's worked in my heart and life and just brought me through. I'm so thankful and for his patience and goodness. So his praise will continue always be in my mouth. Um, look at verse two back in Psalm thirty four. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Um, I was thinking about this, like, you know when little kids kind of brag, like, my daddy's tougher than your daddy. Yeah. My mom could cook better than your mama, right? And, or whatever, little, little kids sometimes think that way, right? And, uh, but who, are we gonna, who should we be boasting about? The goodness of God, right? Our Heavenly Father was provided for us. Our Lord, our brother, Jesus Christ. Just that's the one we want to boast about and, and brag about. And, uh, and you know what the thing is, too? It, it says to the humble to hear of it and be glad. How many of you are encouraged when you, come, when you meet another brother or sister in the Lord and, and you get to hear some good words from them? Something about, hey, God's been taking care of this and he's been doing that. Doesn't it build you up? Constantly. So as we... As we share and we encourage one another about the Lord more and more as the day is approaching, it, uh, you're glad. You're glad to hear and, and good tidings and rejoice in, uh, in somebody else's life. And, um, and that whole spirit, I was looking at that part of being humble. Um, a good way to look at it is not to think too highly of ourselves. I, I, I was uh, in the mornings when I, I love to meet the Lord. First thing in the morning, I'll get up and uh, I'm going to sit with them, and, and I just get aware of, like, what do I have to offer the Lord? You know, at best, I'm just a jar of clay that he's breathed, he's breathed life into. You know, I don't really have anything special to offer God, just myself, best that I can. And so um, he probably smiles, but I go, Lord, Buck Private Williamson, report for duty, sir. You know, just like, God, I'm just here at your service. Please, fill me with your spirit. Help me do what, partner with you today to do what you want to get done today. And I'm just encourage everybody, just, you know, keeping it simple and, and, uh, cause you're going to be a blessing everywhere you go. Um, in verse three, it says, magnify the Lord with me. How many of you got, how many of you had a microscope when you were a little kid? A couple of you? Okay. Well, almost everybody. I remember the first one I got when I was, I was probably six or seven. I remember looking in there, and it came, the thing came with some slides. It had like a, like a, a slide of a blood cell and an onion and a couple of things. You're looking in there and just going, oh, wow. You, know, you could crank it up so it would like be a little bigger and all that. And um, 
So when it says magnify the Lord, and you think about it, it's not like um, um, we're, we're trying to make God look bigger. It's what he wants to do is help us see him more clearly and see how big he is and how great he is. How many of you see, have seen like uh, maybe like on uh, public television or one of the things about the universe and seeing pictures of outer space and planets and stars and the galaxies and all that? Does that like kind of just realizing how big everything is? I remember seeing one show where they had, there was like this little tiny blue speck. I mean, it, picture this whole thing right here. Here's this teeny little blue speck. That's Earth, right? And there's all this space and planets and everything. God put that together. He holds everything in his power. How big is that? Whoa. I mean, just think how, like, we're like little poquitos, right? Compared to in the grand scheme of things. And, uh, but he cares for us. So just having him just understand his greatness, but then at the same time his mercy for us, that he would care for us and love us. Doesn't that just amaze you? Like, oh my gosh. So magnifying the Lord with me, um, it just makes you want to just lift him up and, and exalt his name and just go, oh God, you're so awesome. And how about that, that he came down and, and became a person, he came down, God himself became flesh in Jesus so we could know and speak. He said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Hearing Jesus, his words, and, and how that just builds us up and strengthens us. He just wants to make us just praise him. And because uh, one day, as, as we're all going to be one together with him forever. You're walking on the streets of gold. I like to, I, I wrote this in my son's Bible. Streets of gold, be there. Okay? Yeah. Because I'm looking forward to, to spending time with Danny and just think of, like, for yourselves. You're thinking about your future. That, that's a good thing to think about. You don't want to get lost worrying about your future. But when you think about, like, one day, he's going to call us home. Kind of maybe not too far off either. I've talked to Les a little bit about that. We're like, we've been, you know, friends over 50 years. And, and so, like, we were talking about Bible prophecy back then. And at the time, like, the uh, 10 nations of Europe, the, it was like a common market, you know, right? We're thinking... Maybe that's it. That could be. Well, as we know now, like the United Nations has this 10 region, you know, divide their world up into 10 regions. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, the Agenda 21 and all the things that are going on. You probably know all about a lot of that stuff already, but it's uh, pretty amazing. It's happening all right before our eyes. And uh, it, it just, just makes you want to just exalt him and lift him up all the more. It's... Uh, because God is so awesome. The humble should hear of it and be glad, encouraging one another. Um, this next, uh, in verse 4, there's a couple of verses here in a row. Oh, I want to mention one thing about this too. David, uh, King David, when he was on, he was running from Saul and hiding out. He was actually in a, like living in a cave at the time, and he wrote this. And, and so, he's, so this is like him personally testifying as we read through that. As we do it. And uh, here he is. He, he said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. In Matthew 7, Jesus talked about asking, seeking, and knocking. And he said, and you, and you receive. Matter of fact, we should, we should pop over there real quick. Turn over to Matthew 7. All right, 7-7. Seven, seven. Actually, seven. we're going to look at Matthew 7-7 seven, seven and 8. Okay, here's the Lord Jesus talking, and he says, and tie it in with what we just looked at in verse 4 in Psalm 34. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. And Jesus said, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and him who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Okay. So, the first thing is, 
ask, okay? The second thing is seek. And the third thing, yeah, ask, seek, and knock. S seek him, ask for him. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Do you remember the first time when, when the Lord became close to you and you began to hear his voice, recognize him, working in your heart and life? And the, the confidence that comes from that <clears throat> and deliver us from all our fears. Um, we want to like hand over our fears and worries. Um, this was kind of a fancy Greek word about um, handing over para didomen, which means to hand over. So how about one of these deals? Lord, I'm not going to sweat tomorrow. Oh, hey, by the way, do you know what the 11th commandment is? Anybody? The 11th commandment? Thou shalt not sweat it. Okay? So anyway, we want to hand those, those things over to him. Um, fears, worries, concerns, all those things. Just hand them over to the Lord. God, we trust you, and you speak it out. And, and uh, he promises to take care of us and just to take that fear away and give us the confidence he's going to see us through. Um, I love this next verse here. In, in verse 5, it says, They looked to him and were radiant. You know, Moses, back in um, Exodus, flip back to Exodus 34. Probably a lot of, probably most everybody remembers this. This is um, here we are in uh, Exodus thirty four, twenty nine through thirty. Okay. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and, the ch and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, they were afraid to, afraid to come near him. They looked at him and were radiant. That's what Psalm 34 says. Um, there, like I mentioned that about, about Pastor Les, when he came, I can remember just that, just that Jesus shine in his face. The more we get... The more we spend time with the Lord, the more we get closer to him and, and seek him, just like we encouraged here, his presence becomes more real in your life, becomes more manifest in your life. And uh, the whole thing about when Jesus said, you know, let your light shine for, for men. They can see your good, good works and glorify your Father in heaven. There's something about that when you, when you meet people that have been hanging out with the Lord and spending time with him. There's that extra love and the God's presence just increasing and uh, flowing it and I know I, I sure want to have more of that happen in my life all the time every day they looked at him in their, and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed sometimes it's, sometimes it's difficult when you get in a situation you want to share you want to share a word from the Lord you want to bring like um, some encouragement maybe somebody you've been working with or praying for. I know I think about that like at uh, my job teaching music, like when, when new students come or parents kind of try to feel my way through the situation and, and to find out where they, where they are a little bit. And, um, and, and whenever, and sometimes opportunities will open up to be able to share and testify and, and, and speak of the Lord. And, and, uh, cause I don't want to ever be ashamed of, of the gospel of Christ. I don't ever be ashamed to not speak up when the opportunity presents itself because God is good and people need to know about him. I, I think back on um, when the Lord was working my life back when I was in college. And um, and I remember this uh, was kind of a, you, you, you know, Don, you mentioned about the hippies, you know, back in the day. And I remember that there was a pretty powerful move of the Lord back then. And, and I remember I walked out from my dorm where I was in or Salem, Oregon, and there was this kind of kind of rough looking little like guy and he kind of had a beard and he goes, hey brother, have you been born again? And I was like, what? I, I live in America, I'm a Christian, you know. And, but, but I remember that, you know, God used it. I'll never forget that guy. Have you been born again? You know, and just asked me, I was like, whoa. But it was one of, it's God sent the guy along just to drop some more seed in my heart to help me in my journey 
as, as I went along. So, um, and then I had a, there was another guy on our, on our campus there, like, all the other friends I'd made at the campus, like, to smoke weed and stuff, so, you know, they'd come out, hey, Dan, let's burn one, you know, and that kind of thing, and, oh, sure, and, and then, but this one guy used to stop by, um, there was something different about him, it was obvious, and he'd just go, hey, Dan, how you doing, and he just had to, remember talking about the radiance, he had that Jesus shine in his face, I didn't know what it was, we used to stop by my dorm room and just, he didn't want to smoke weed or anything, he just wanted to see how I was doing. And I remember just going, like, what's with this guy? And I didn't understand, and then he goes, hey, one day he came by and he goes, hey Dan, um, down, our, down our church we've got a um, thing we call the fifth quarter. It's a lot of fun. After football games and stuff, we get down there and, and uh, play games and things, and um, so he goes, you want to come? And so I, I went one night and I was like, Wow, you know, there's a lot of young people um, having fun and everything. Checked out. He goes, we got a little, we have a group that meets on the campus too. And so I went there one night, and uh, they had a guitar and sang songs and let me ask questions and all that. But I, I remember it was powerful as, as God was working and just. And I, I'll never forget that guy. Uh, his name was Tom Beal. I tried to hunt him down too. I called the school. I tried to hunt him down, find where he was. I guess I'll have to wait till eternity to go. Thank you, brother. Thank you for letting God use you in my life so I could find the Lord. Because it was, uh, I, you know, I started going to church and, and, uh, and just gave my heart to Jesus one day at the beach up there in Oregon and opened up my heart. And, um, I can't remember if it was, it might have been my mom too, because she was really praying for me. But somebody had told me that verse in Revelation 3.20. said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone will open that door, I'll come into him. And I actually did that. I was at the beach that day up in uh, uh, Pacific City or Oregon. And uh, <clears throat> I was with some other guys, and, and we were kind of drifting off by ourselves. And I said, Go, Jesus, I, I, know I, need you. I know I need you in my life. I, I, I can't make sense out of everything. And so uh, I just asked you, please, come in. And I, and I took my hand and just said, please come in. And something happened. Like, I mean, it wasn't lightning bolts or anything. It was just the middle of the day, right? But I knew in my heart something happened. I told the guys I was with, I go, guys, I asked Jesus in my heart, and something happened. And they're like, really? Okay, and, and, but that began the journey. I remember um, it's, it's just been so exciting ever since. That was when I was 19. That was a long time ago. Yeah. I won't tell you how long. It's a long time ago. So... Praise God. Look to him and they were radiant and their faces not ashamed. In verse 6 it says, in Psalm 34, verse 6 says, This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. How many, how many of you think, think back in your life, how many times has it been when you were like down in the dumps, right? I mean, Mr. Blues came in and kicked the door down and did trouble. I mean, you're like, oh my gosh. Right, things are piling up, or whatever it is. Maybe you're in despair. Troubles that hit you in every which way. Can you think back in your life? Probably don't have to think very hard to remember some of that, right? Maybe I don't mean me going through it a hard time right now. I don't know, but 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 this poor man cried out. The Lord hears the faintest cry, anybody, because he's he's searching. He's he's searching everywhere, all over, for for everyone, anyone who cry out and ask for his help. He's right there. Ready, ready to meet that person, ready to come and minister and reveal himself to them. One of the most precious verses in, in the Bible is, is when in John 14 when Jesus said, um, you, you love me. We should go over there. I don't want to botch up the quote. John 14. Let's read it. It's just so precious. Whoops. Back up one page. I got lost reading there for a second. Do, 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 do. Oh, here we go. Okay, John 14, 21. 
Um, he who has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. I'll reveal myself to him. What incredible promise that is. That's what Jesus is saying. If you'll open up your heart, I'll reveal myself to you. That's something that people who don't know the Lord don't understand. If you're finding me, sort of like, how do you know that Jesus is the only way? You're telling me, how do you know? Well, because he reveals himself to you. That's his promise there in John 14. That's an easy thing to explain to somebody, too. Well, Jesus said he would. You don't pay up your heart. He reveals himself to you. And, and I know there's been some times when I was, I was so low, man, just like lowering a snake's belly in a wagon red. Okay? Did you get a visual? I was so, I was so low I could play handball off a curb. Dangle my feet over an edge of a piece of paper. Okay. All right. All right. I'll stop. Okay. It's good. But anyway, being, being just and crying out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. He, he specializes in bringing this through. It's awesome. Remember Job? Job, Job man. Boils. Kids got killed. Just troubles, cattle, everything, lost everything, sitting in ashes and sackcloth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I know I'm going to see him in my flesh. So, good encouragement for us. Nobody had to go through anything quite like him that I know personally anyway. But the poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Let's look at verse 7 in Psalm 34. Okay. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Um, I got to reading about uh, the angel of the Lord. That's a lot of scholars feel that was at times when um, in, in the scriptures mention, like in, in uh, Joshua and Judges and some of the um, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and sometimes in the past, it says the angel of the Lord. A lot of scholars feel that was the pre, pre incarnate Jesus showing up early and revealing himself to them at the time and um, encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Um, the, the nearness, the presence of God, uh, that's just, it's awesome. And verse 8, it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Um, the, the word for taste that's used there is uh, ta'am. And it means to discern or perceive or evaluate. Um, you know, I can think of, a, I don't know what everybody's favorite food is. Um, I haven't been out to the broiler in a little while. I'm thinking maybe one of these days I might just go out and have a little steak. It could be. Or maybe the salmon or something. But, you know, that's the kind of taste that, um, how many of you, how do you enjoy Mexican food the best? Anybody? Okay. Wow. Anybody enjoy Chinese food? Really? A lot? Whoa, okay. There you go. Um, how about Thai food? Oh, well, all right. Well, there you go. Everybody likes to eat, so that's good. So taste and see. Um, that's a, kind of a cool way to, to share with somebody, too, that you're friends with, too. Hey, just taste and see the Lord. It's good. That's a good thing to say. It's, um, it, it rings out. And um, blessed is the man who trusts in him. Um, blessed is pretty cool. The word... Uh, means happy or successful or contented. There's a certain peace and a rest in God, isn't there? When, uh, when he's working in your life and you just, you just feel at peace. And uh, in, in the Greek, there's a word for blessed. It's makarios. It means a condition where congratulations are in order, joy and satisfaction. Um, there was an old country western side. I don't know if it was Waylon Jennings or one of those guys who said there's a only one man in a thousand with a satisfied mind. Anybody know that old country song? No. All right. Just rock and rollers. Okay. All right. Yeah. But it's a, um, there, is, there is just a peace and, and a satisfaction in knowing. Um, I'll tell you a quick story. When, uh, when we were living in Southern California, our daughter was going to uh, beauty school down in San Diego. We were up in just outside Oceanside, and um, 
So one night, uh, they had a power outage, huge power outage. 1.9 million people, customers were out of power in Southern California. All of San Diego, Oceanside, blacked out. And Chrissy was on her way home, and she, she was out of gas. She just pulled in a gas station, and the power went out. So she called us. We were out of power where we, where we live, too. And she called us. She goes, Dad, it's dark. I'm at a gas station in San Diego off the freeway. I'm scared. I need, I need gas. Can you help? And, and I was like, oh, man. I wasn't sure what to do. So I went into the car, and it, Temecula, over the hill, had they, they, were, they still had power on. So I, Lynn and I, got, I grabbed a couple of gas cans. We headed over the hill to get some gas for Chrissy. And we pulled into the gas station, loaded up, and, and we're just about ready to head back out on the freeway. Uh, and uh, I'm in my little car, my little Kia Rio. And I still got it to it. It's out, parked out there, a little blue guy. And uh, so my wife and I are there. And, and, and this, we pull up at the stoplight, and there's this big truck. You know one of those big monster trucks? Giant tires, sitting way up high. And there's a guy sitting there, I can see his arm, real burly guy, big beard. He's sitting on there, and, and I look up and I go, hey, how's it going? He goes, living the dream, baby. And I, I've been laughing ever since. He just rolled right out of his mouth, living the dream, baby. And I was just like, oh man. I, I, I'm not kidding, I laughed all the way down there. We, did, we found Chrissy too off the freeway, pitch, pitch dark, we found her, we got her gas, got her home and everything. But ever since then, that stuck with me. So when I go to the gas station or I'll go to the grocery store or people ask me, like, like my neighbor the other day, how's it going, Dan? Living the dream, baby. And it's funny people's reaction too. Like um, how sometimes clerks at the store go, oh, me too, or oh, I'm working on it, or not now, or something, but it's, but it's kind of neat. So you, you try it sometime. Just living the dream. You throw in the baby if you want to. You have to practice a couple. Living the dream, baby. Yeah, all right. Anyway, just enjoy the Lord. So, um, blessed is a man who trusts in him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Um, in verse 9, it says, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. That'd be us. There's no want to those who fear him. You know, this is really cool. Probably, I've thought about the fear of the Lord often. I, and I, I kind of figured I understood it pretty well. Just having a, um, just a, respect and, and reverent fear, because he's God, like, he's really big. I'm like really, really small. And, um, and so, and then, but it got a little clear for me when I got to digging, preparing for coming to, to share with you guys. And fear, fear is a sudden fear. Like all of a sudden you're walking along and you know, there's a lion in front of you, right? Ha! Ah! Right, that's like a sudden fear, but that's not the fear that the Bible uses in referring to the Lord. It's not a sudden fear, it's a reverence, just an awe. That's the fear of the Lord, and that's a good thing. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if, as we want to grow and we want to become everything God wants us to be, you want to have that, just that reverential fear, and Daddy, please help me to do my very best in everything I say. Please put a guard over my lips. Please keep my heart full of, the, of your spirit. Help, I, I don't want to do, I don't want to misstep my bounds or stumble anybody or do anything that, that uh, is going to displease you. Because he's our, he's daddy. You know, I, I know in my parents, um, I was always afraid to do the wrong thing because I'd have to face my mom. I wasn't as afraid of my dad, um, but my mom, the, we called it the Maggie look. She could give you a look. Oh, my gosh. If you did something, you just, that look of disapproval, I'm just, oh. None of us kids, we talked about it, just that, that I can't do it. <laughs> but I, I didn't want to disappoint my mom. But how much more so for our Heavenly Father that we, we, we don't want to displease him in anything we do. That's why, like, like all our like transactions, honesty, integrity, um, with our fellow man, everything possible. We want it to be just all in the bright light of heaven, right? So, because um, we're going to give account of him one day too, aren't we? You know, the judgment seat of Christ for all us believers, 1 Corinthians 3 talks about that, that we will give account of him for our faithfulness and stewardship and the time, way we spend our time and the words we use and all those things. You will give account. I will give account to him. And it's really... Uh, 
um, kind of sobering, but at the same time recognizing like we want to do our best. And then the beautiful thing is there's the mercy seat. When we do mess up, deal with it. You say the wrong thing, you stumble somebody, apologize for it, ask forgiveness. Sorry, Lord, sorry, please help me. Do better next time, right? Don't, don't sit around and wait because then the enemy can work on you. Because everybody's going to mess up. Everybody does. We all sin in different ways, but you want to keep your slate clean. Um, there was, a, there was a, one of my favorite old bands I used to listen to all the time was Tower of Power. I still use some of their music sometimes to help students. How many of you are any Tower of Power fans here? One? Two? Mikey? Okay. They're just a great band. They had horns and everything. It's just a really fun band. But they had one song called Clean Slate. And he's talking to his girlfriend. He goes, I just need a clean slate. That's all a man wants. Okay? But for us, we want to keep a clean slate before the Lord. Right? Just, just keep it all covered under the, the precious blood of the Lamb. And that's, that's, that's the deal. So... Fear the Lord. There's no want to those that fear him. Um, in, in Philippians 4.19, uh, let's turn there real quick. Philippians 4.19, this is really good scripture. Here we go. There is no want to those who, fe who fear him. All right, here we go. Philippians 4.19. Here we go. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God's easily able to take care of, uh, of all the things that concern us. He knows, he knows we need food to eat. He knows we need clothes to wear, a roof over our heads. Um, he understands that, and, he's, and he promises he's going to take care of all of our needs. Um, needs, wants, sometimes we need a little discernment between those. Sometimes you want stuff, and it's not really something you need. I was to mention these song things, but there's a, uh, one of my favorite uh, artists, a saxophone player, uh, Tom Scott. He had, a, he, he had a song that was really good. It's more than you need. It's greed. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? If it's more than you need, it's greed. Okay, that's, that's pretty true, okay? Um, okay, let's see. No one to those fear. And then in verse 10, uh, the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek, seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Remember, we were talking in Matthew 7, ask, seek, and knock. Seek the Lord. I, I want to encourage everybody, including myself here, that like as, from today going forward, I mean, it, yesterday's gone, tomorrow will be today when we get there, but for, but for right now, I want to encourage everybody here to just be a seeker of God. Just renew that passion in your heart. I'm going to seek the Lord with all my might. I'm going to seek. I, w I want the Lord in my life more than I ever have had him before. I'm, I'm a, God, I'm hungry for you. I want I'm more of your presence, more, more of the power of your spirit working in my life, that I can be everything that you want me to be and uh, fulfill everything, all your desires that you have for me and uh, make it down the home stretch strong. How's that sound? That a good thing? Everybody on board with that? Yep. Um, well, let's do this. Um, I, I would love to just pray with everybody right now. Can we all stand? Thank you, God. Yeah, let's, uh, let's just open up our hearts before him. Father God, we're all in your presence right now. You know every one of us thoroughly, in and out. You know there's no secret thing hidden from you, dear, dear Lord. And today we come before you uh, humbly and we'd ask uh, for your tender mercy right now and uh, that the blood of the Lamb would cleanse our hearts, our minds, our spirits. And we ask forgiveness for anything 
um, we've done to uh, block somebody's path, to, to offend you uh, in any way, and because we wanted just a clean slate today. And we purpose in our hearts today as your kids that we will seek you more than we ever have before, that we'll be, just ask you to give us that hunger for your word, hunger for your will in our lives. And uh, we bless you today. Um, teach us to praise you at all times. Teach us to bless you at all times and just praise you continually. Uh, thank you, God. Make us more aware of the people around us and that we can share a good word, that we can pray faithfully for those uh, who don't know you, that we can just be good witnesses for you, ambassadors for Christ, um, strong, every one of us from here to the finish line. We thank you, God. We know there's just only so much time that we have individually and then for this planet here. And so we just want to do our very, very best. And so please today, meet every one of us and empower us fresh anew, um, fresh, fresh uh, touch of your spirit. Just uh, work strong and powerful in each one of us. We thank you. We give you praise today. We give you all the glory and honor. And we remember Pastor Les and Debbie special too and their family. Continue to strengthen them. Give, let them know how much we're thinking of them right now and just send in our love and, and uh, blessings their way too. We give you all honor today in your name, Lord Jesus. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right. Good. What do we do next? Is that it? Fellowship. Fellowship. Okay, mingle. Spread the love. 